Hey friends, Adam here. I have a new toy I want to play with today. It's the DC to DC power supply from Starlink. So for a long time, if you had a Starlink Gen 3 or the Starlink standard, you would have to use some kind of third party solution or do some electrical work yourself. This is a new plug and play option that would let you hook up your Starlink standard in your camper, RV, adventure van, truck camper, something like that, directly to a battery bank or other DC powered power source to save a little bit of juice and not necessarily have the extra component and heat and noise of an inverter, which is what you had to do in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and wire this up today. This is the existing Starlink standard AC power supply that I'm going to be replacing. And so this has the barrel jack connector for the Starlink router. And then the other side has an AC power connector that you need to plug into an inverter or an AC power source. Now I'm hoping that this is the same size as the new Starlink DC power supply so that I can reuse some of the existing brackets I have. So let's go ahead and unbox this. And look at that. I think they are the same size. All right, let's see what else is in the box. And we've got about a three foot cable. And it looks like both of these have the same connector on the end. And so here's my new one. Looks like this one I'll just plug in here. Like so. And then I am gonna probably just cut the end off this one and uh, put some ring terminals on it so I can hook it up to my S-Pod relay. But I'll show you that when I get out to the truck camper. All right, so we're gonna cut this one end off of the power input to the DC to DC Sterling power supply. And uh, I just sort of like to, to do stuff and figure it out as I go. So uh, I'm not gonna overthink this one too much. I'm just gonna cut this off close to the connector. And then you can see here, it's just two pair wire, um, a red and a black. And so I'm gonna cut back some of the sheath so I can get the wires out and then I'm gonna put some terminals on it. So just use a knife to very carefully put a slit in this wire. It's very much like working with Romex or something like that if you've worked with that. I'm gonna get some side cutters and just snip this gray sheath away, make it a little bit easier to work with these other wires. So it's two pair, 12 gauge, if you're curious. And uh, I'm just gonna strip these and then I'm gonna go get some ring terminals and probably some heat shrink just to clean this up. And I'm gonna get a nice end on this to connect to the truck camper. All right, so I double checked and these are the connectors. I'm gonna need to use this little fork kind of connector and it just works with my uh, bus bar on my relay switch, which I'll show you in a little bit. And so I'm gonna get these crimped on the ends of these wires. All right, I'm just gonna crimp these on there. All right, and two, so wired up. Got the other end connected to the DC to DC power supply. Let's go install it in the rig. I have all of my electronic equipment mounted on this board in my truck camper. And so it's easy to take out. So I have my inverter on here, which I won't need as much, but I'm still gonna keep it in case I need it for something else. I have the Starlink standard router and I have the new power supply that I'm gonna be using, the DC to DC power supply. Now I made some brackets previously, uh, 3D designed and printed, that are just nice and easy to mount these on this board wherever I want it. So I'm gonna put those brackets on the router. And like I said, I think these two power supplies, the AC power supply and the DC to DC power supply, are the same size. So we're gonna, yep, look at that. Same brackets fit, so that is great. And I'm just gonna get these lined up. And then this cable will go here in the router like this. And then my ethernet cable from the Starlink will go here. And then this will go to my battery bank in the camper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all screwed in and then take it out to the truck camper. So I like to use these self-tapping screws. They have a little point on them and they dig right into the wood. They also have sort of a flat head, which almost acts as like um, a little bit of a washer. So uh, just really great for simple mounting tasks. Thank you. 
And you can see here how these are going right in without any pre-drilling, which is why I like them. I carry a bunch of extras with me in the field in case I ever have to repair anything or mount anything new. This is under one of the dinette seats in the truck camper. Normally there's a cushion on here where you can either sit or sleep. And so it's also where some of the electronics are for the camper. And the board will get mounted back here. And then over here, this is the S-Pod relay. So the S-Pod is a relay controller that can be controlled via touchscreen or an app, and it just lets me hook up different devices and sort of have an on-off switch or even a dimmer for things that support dimming. And here you can see the touchscreen option for the S-Pod, and so you can see right now the Starlink Mini is turned on. That's mounted on the roof, and then I'm going to make the last switch that currently says outside for the Starlink standard since I now want the inverter and the Starlink to be separate. We find it super nice to have a on-off switch for our Starlink. Makes it easy to know if it's on or off, turn it on, turn it off. And honestly, we don't like to keep it on the whole time. I'll be doing another video talking about internet hour, which is our ritual for sort of when we do and don't use Starlink. And uh, specifically for that reason, I really like having a way to turn the Starlink on and off very easily. All right, now I'm not gonna hook all this up quite yet. I sort of wanna dry fit it, test it, make sure it's gonna work. But I am gonna get the cables connected so that I can do a test on the Starlink and make sure everything is working okay. So I'm gonna plug in the ethernet cable that goes to the outside of the camper where we have a jack for the Starlink standard. And then I'm gonna come in and wire up the DC to DC power supply to the S-Pod. Now, of course, if you're gonna be doing electrical work, make sure that you have your power turned off. Um, either your main power or the power to the devices you're going to be working on. And of course, make sure you know that you're hooking up the right wires to the right terminals. So for me, it's going to be red and then black. So I wired everything up and as a quick test, I just powered on the Starlink using that new switch. I still need to change the name from outside to Starlink, but here in my iPhone, you can see that I'm connected to GJ Starlink V3, which is the Starlink. Now, it's saying that there's no internet connection uh, because I don't actually have the Starlink plugged in quite yet, but I just wanted to do an incremental test to make sure the wiring was working. So, looks like that power supply is working, and I'm going to do a full test with everything hooked up. I have the Starlink standard set up on a tripod like I normally would at camp. And I'm just going to give it a few minutes to start up and then see if we get a connection and everything looks like it's working. So I'm in the Starlink app on my phone and you can see that DJ Starlink 3, which is the Gen 3 or Starlink standard, is in restricted mode because the service is paused. So right now I'm using my Starlink Mini, but I'm going to be traveling with both, doing additional field tests to compare things like power, maximum bandwidth, range of the routers and things like that. And so I just wanted to make sure I could turn this one on if I wanted to as well. But for now, I'm going to leave the service paused. All right, so that seemed pretty easy. If you're comfortable with doing some basic electrical wiring, I think you'll be able to hook it up just fine. Now, the true test will be, as we have it out in the field, how much power does it use? And so we'll be using our Victron battery monitor app, plus a few other approaches to figure out how much power we're using with the new DC to DC power supply versus the AC power supply under real conditions like remote working, doing live video calls, downloading maps, and planning adventures for the days ahead. So if that sounds interesting to you, hit subscribe. You get notified about future videos when they come out. We'll be doing that in the coming weeks and months. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button so other folks like you can find helpful videos like this. Until next time, I'm Adam from Bantha Overland, and I hope to see you out there real soon on the trail.